the greenhouse effect is the process by which radiation from a planet's atmosphere warms the planet surface to a temperature above what it would be without this atmosphere greenhouse gases is a planet atmosphere radiate energy in all directions part of this radiation is directed towards the surface warming the intensity or the strength of the greenhouse effect will depend on the atmosphere's temperature and on the amount of greenhouse gases that the atmosphere contains earth's natural greenhouse effect is critical to sporting life and initially was a precursor to life moving out of the ocean onto the land surface human activities however mainly the burning of fossil fuels and cutting of forest have accelerated the greenhouse effect and caused global warming here i want to share an interesting effect about the venus planet the planet venus experienced runway greenhouse effect resulting an atmosphere which is 96% carbon dioxide with the surface atmospheric pressure roughly the same as found 900 meter or 3000 foot underwater on earth amazing venus may have had water ocean but they would have boiled off as the mean surface temperature rose to 735 kelvin or 462 degrees celsius temperature or 863 fahrenheit degree the greenhouse effect on venus is particularly large for several reasons number 1 it is nearer to the sun than earth by about 30% number 2 its very dense atmosphere consists mainly of carbon dioxide venus experienced a runway greenhouse in the past and we expect that earth will in about 2 billion years as the solar luminosity increases Titan is a body with both a greenhouse effect and an anti-greenhouse effect. So Titan is defined as a body which has greenhouse effect and anti-greenhouse effect. Clear? The presence of nitrogen, methane and hydrogen in the atmosphere contribute to a greenhouse effect. increasing the surface temperature by 21 kelvin over the expected temperature of the body with no atmosphere the existence of a high altitude haze which absorbs wavelengths of solar radiation but is transparent to infrared contribute to an anti greenhouse effect of approximately 9 kelvin the net effect of these two phenomena result is a net warming of 12 kelvin so titan is 12 kelvin warmer than it would be if there were no atmosphere the term greenhouse effect continues to see use in scientific circles and the media despite being a slight misnomer and an atmosphere reduces radioactive heat loss while a greenhouse blocks connective heat loss 
the result however is an increase in temperature in both cases history the existence of the greenhouse effect while not named as such was proposed by joseph fourier in 1824 the argument and the evidence were further strengthened by cloud boitlet in 1827 and 1820 38 john tindall was the first to measure the infrared absorption and emission of various gases and vapors from 1859 to onward he showed that the effect was due to a very small proportion of the atmosphere with the main gases having no effect and was largely due to water vapors through small percentages of hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide had a significant effect earth receives energy from the sun in the form of ultraviolet visible and near infrared radiation about 26% of the incoming solar energy is reflected to space by the atmosphere and cloud and the 19% is absorbed by the atmosphere and clouds most of the remaining energy is absorbed by the surface of earth because the earth's surface is colder than the sun it radiates at a wavelengths that are much longer than the wavelengths that were absorbed most of this thermal radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere and warms it the atmosphere also gains heat by sensible and latent heat fluxes from the surface the atmosphere radiates energy both upward and downward the part radiated downward is absorbed by the surface of the earth this leads to a higher equilibrium temperature than if the temperature did not radiate an ideal thermal conductivity black body at the same distance from the sun as earth would have a temperature of about 5.3 degrees celsius or 41.5 fahrenheit however because earth reflects about 30% of the incoming sunlight this idealized planet's effective temperature would be about minus 18 degrees celsius temperature or 0 fahrenheit the surface temperature of this hypothetical planet is 33 degrees celsius or 59 fahrenheit about earth's actual surface temperature of approximately 14 degrees celsius temperature or 57 fahrenheit the greenhouse effect is the contribution of greenhouse gases to this difference the idealized greenhouse model is a simplification in reality the atmosphere near the earth's surface is largely opaque to thermal radiation and most heat loss from the surface is by convection however radiative energy loses become increasingly important higher in the atmosphere largely because of the decreasing concentration of a water vapor an important greenhouse effect rather than the surface itself it is more realistic to think of the greenhouse effect as applying to a layer in the mid troposphere which is effectively coupled to the surface by a lapse rate 
within the region where radiative effect are important the description given by the idealized greenhouse model becomes realistic earth's surface warmed to an effective temperature around minus 18 degrees celsius or 0 fahrenheit radiates long wavelengths infrared heat in the range of 4 to 100 micrometer at these wavelengths greenhouse gases that were largely transparent to incoming solar radiations are more absorbent greenhouse gases including most diatomic gases with the two different atoms such as carbon monoxide and all gases with the three or more atoms are able to absorb and emit infrared radiation though more than 99% of the dry atmosphere is ir transparent the main constituent intermolecular collisions cause the energy absorbed and emitted by the greenhouse gases to be shared with the other known ir active gases by their percentage contribution to the greenhouse effect on the earth the four major gases are water vapors 36 to 70% carbon dioxide 9 to 26% methane 4 to 9% ozone 3 to 7% it is not possible to assign a specific percentage to each gas because the absorption and emission bands of the gases overlap clouds also absorb and emit infrared radiation and thus affect the radiative properties of the atmosphere atmospheric gases only absorb some wavelengths of energy but are transparent to others absorption pattern of water vapors represented by blue peaks and carbon dioxide by pink peaks overlap in some wavelengths carbon dioxide is not as strong a greenhouse gas as water vapors but it absorbs energy in longer wavelengths that is between 12 to 15 micrometers that water vapors does not particularly closing the window through which a heat radiated by the surface would normally escape to space role in climate change strengthening of the greenhouse effect through human activities is known as the enhanced or anthropogenic greenhouse effect this increase in radiative forcing from human activities is attributed mainly to increased atmospheric carbon dioxide levels according to the 2014 assessment report from the intergovernmental panel on climate change atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxides are unprecedented at least the last many years this effect together with those of other orthopogenic drivers have been detected throughout the climate system and are extremely likely to have been the dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid 20th century carbon dioxide is produced by fossil fuel burning and other activities such as cement production and tropical deforestation 
measurements of carbon dioxide from the muna loa observatory show that concentration have increased from about 313 parts per million or ppm in 1960 passing the 400 ppm milestone on may 9 2013 The current observed amount of carbon dioxide exceeds the geological record maxima which is nearly about 300 ppm from ice core data. The effect of combustion produced carbon dioxide on the global climate a special case of greenhouse effect first described in 19 a in 18 96 by Savant Arrhenius has also been called the calendar effect Over the past years ice core data shows that carbon dioxide has varied from the values as low as 180 ppm to the pre-industrial level of 270 ppm Paleo climatologists consider variation in carbon dioxide concentration to be a fundamental factor influencing climate variation over this time scale. Greenhouse gas footprint. The greenhouse gas footprint refers to the amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted during the creation of products or services human activities are one of the main causes of greenhouse gases these increase the earth's temperature and are emitted from fossil fuel usage in electricity and other by products of manufacturing the major effects mainly consist of climate changes such as extreme precipitation and acidification and warming of ocean climate change has been occurring since the start of the industrial revolution in the 1820s due to humans heavy reliance on fossil fuel energy usage and constant deforestation the amount of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere is increasing which makes reducing our greenhouse gas footprints harder to achieve however there are several ways to reduce one's greenhouse gas footprint choosing more energy efficient eating habits using more energy efficient household appliances increase usage of a fuel efficient cars and saving electricity rise in greenhouse gas over time since the industrial revolution greenhouse gas emission have increased immensely As of 2017 the carbon dioxide levels are 142% of what they were pre industrial revolution methane is up to 53% and nitrous oxide is 121% of pre industrial levels The energy driven consumption of fossil fuels has made greenhouse gases emissions rapidly increase causing the earth's temperature to rise. In the past 250 years human activity such as burning fossil fuels and cutting down carbon absorbing forest have contributed greatly to this increase in the last 25 years alone emission have increased by more than 33% most of which comes from carbon dioxide 
accounting for three fourth of this increase. Lifespan of greenhouse gases. Different greenhouse gases last different amounts of times in the atmosphere. For example, fluorinated gases can last for a few weeks to a few thousand years in the atmosphere, whereas nitrous oxide can last for over a century. However, methane is somewhere in the middle, lasting a little over a decade. Carbon dioxide's lifespan cannot be calculated exactly because it does not disappear, but is either used by plants or absorbed by the ocean. There is a possibility that some greenhouse gases have been in the atmosphere since the beginning of the 20th century when the first sign of an increase of these gases arose. Now let's see little about our causes. Although some production of greenhouse gases is natural, human activity has increased the production substantially. Major industrial sources of greenhouse gases are power plants, residential buildings and road transportation as well as energy industry processes and losses, iron and steel manufacturing, coal mining and chemical and photochemical industries. Changes in the environment also contribute to increase in greenhouse emission such as deforestation, forest degradation and land use, livestock, agricultural soil and water and waste water. China is the largest contributor of greenhouse gases, causing up 30% of the total emission. The United States contributes 15%, followed by the EU with 9%, then India with 7%, Russia with 5%, Japan with 4%, and other miscellaneous countries making up the remaining 30%. Although carbon dioxide is the most prevalent gas, it is not the most damaging. Carbon dioxide is essential to life because animals release it during cellular respiration when they breathe and plants use it for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is released naturally by decomposition, ocean release and respiration. Human contribute an increase of carbon dioxide emission by burning fossil fuels, deforestation and cement production. Methane is largely released by coal, oil and natural gas industries. Although methane is not mass produced like carbon dioxide, it is still very prevalent. Methane is more harmful than carbon dioxide because it traps heat better than carbon dioxide. Methane is a main component in a natural gas. Recently, industries as well as consumers have been using natural gas because they believe that it is better for the environment since it contains less carbon dioxide. However, this is not the case because 
methane is actually more harmful to the environment nitrous oxide it is released by fuel combustion most of which comes from coal fired power plants agriculture and industrial activities fluorinated gases include hydrofluorocarbons perfluorocarbons sulfur hexafluoride and nitrogen trifluoride these gases have no natural source and are the products of human activities the biggest cause of these sources is the usage of ozone depleting substances such as refrigerants aerosol propellants foam blowing agents solvents and fire retardants it is important to know about the role of a different greenhouse gases there is a whole family of greenhouse gases but an important thing to remember that they are not all created equally a particularly important distinction among them is their varying global warming potential some are much more efficient and the that is decidedly not a complement in this context at retaining a heat energy in the atmosphere not allowing it to escape some are short lived while others can easily last for decades or longer in the atmosphere some greenhouse gases are emitted in vast quantities other have just the opposite qualities emitted in only trace amounts so extremely efficient in blanketing the planet's atmosphere and keeping heat from the escaping beyond it as the temperature of the atmosphere rises more heat is evaporated from the ground storage that is from river oceans reservoirs and soil because the air is warmer the absolute humidity can be higher leading to more water vapors in the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas the higher concentration of water vapor is then able to absorb more thermal infrared energy radiated from the earth thus further warming the atmosphere the warmer atmosphere can then hold more water vapors and so on this is referred to as a positive feedback loop carbon dioxide occurs both naturally and as a result of human activities it is an inevitable byproduct of the incomplete combustion of fossil fuel and is particular cool in 2013 carbon dioxide accounted for about 82% of all united states greenhouse gases emission from human activities long stable in the range of about 280 parts per million in the atmosphere carbon dioxide concentrations currently are more in the range of 400 ppm the continuing upward trajectory of carbon dioxide concentration under what is a called a business as usual scenario is one of the matters for 
particular concern to the environmental scientist. Methane is far less abundant than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and it has a considerably short lifespan of 12 years. The National Research Council says that concentration of methane in the atmosphere while increasing sharply throughout the 1980s have since leveled off somewhat and now stand about two and one half times their pre-industrial level. Valued for energy production, methane like carbon dioxide is odorless and colorless and it has both beneficial and harmful qualities. Environmental Protection Agency figures indicate that human activities account for over 60,000 of total methane emission primarily from industry, agriculture and waste management activities. Nitrous Oxide Nitrous oxide occurs naturally in Earth's atmosphere as part of the nitrogen cycle. While it is the product of a wide variety of natural sources and human activities like agriculture, forest fuel combustion, wastewater management and industrial processes are increasing the atmospheric concentrations. In addition, nitrous oxide molecules in the atmosphere have long lifespans about 120 years before they are removed in a sink or destroyed as a result of chemical reaction. Based on 2012 data, Nitrous dioxide comprises about 6% of all U.S. emission resulting from human activities. Globally, about two-fifths of nitrous oxide emissions are attributable to human activities. Fluorinated gases are emitted in small quantities than the other greenhouse gases. But what they lack in volume, they can make up in potency and long life spans in the atmosphere, ranging from 1 to 270 years for hydrofluorocarbons to 800 to 50,000 years for perfluorocarbons and about 3,200 years for SF6. Once emitted into the atmosphere, they disappear widely around the globe. They are removed from the atmosphere only by sunlight in the highest levels of the atmosphere. Being the most potent of the greenhouse gases and having the longest lifespan, these gases often are described as the high global warming potential gases.